What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Earlier today on Pat's Path Predictor, we were reporting about the NHC tagging an area of interest in the eastern Atlantic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have more breaking news for you. The NHC has went ahead and tagged another area of interest in the eastern Atlantic. So just to clear up some stuff, earlier today I was reporting on how the tropical wave right here was basically being tagged as an area of interest. Well, I got the wrong wa uh, wave later on. I realized that because it's actually the wave behind it that's coming off the coast of Africa tomorrow, and this one wasn't tagged yet. Well, ladies and gentlemen... This just got tagged, and I anticipated it would get tagged earlier today, primarily because I've been seeing it continuing to organize. I've been seeing broad rotation. I've seen a definite low pressure system with it as we continue to talk about this. So we're going to go ahead and show you what the NHC is telling you finally about this. Here's what we have for the Central Tropical Atlantic. Another area of low pressure could develop by the middle to later portion of this week over the East Central Tropical Atlantic, several hundred miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Some slow development of the the system is possible as it moves west northwest over the central tropical Atlantic. 20% chance of formation in the next seven days. Here's this one we have right here. Really, no major changes. 20% chance of formation in the next seven days. So that's the big situation we have going on. That's the breaking news we have for you tonight. Now, we're going to go ahead and once again show you some stuff that we've been taking a look at. Some more model runs have come in, and we need to absolutely show you these. So this is the 12Z European run we're first going to show you. So this, so basically, just to clear up everything, the one that was just tagged is to, is to the west of the one that's being tagged earlier today. So... Here's what we have for the European. Basically, we have a low pressure system starting to develop pretty much right here in the next three days or so, and it's going to take its time to organize and develop. This is the first tropical wave we have right here, and this is the second tropical wave that's moving off the coast of Africa in the next couple of days. So this is what we have. Actually, no, never mind that. It's actually this uh, low pressure system right here that's approaching the Antilles by five days out according to the European. This one over here is the second one. So I want to go ahead and kind of briefly talk about all this. So the European for this second wave actually has this getting pretty strong and pretty intense. So here's what we have going on. We have as of right now the 12Z European came out they're now calling for this second wave to basically intensify into a pretty strong tropical storm, 998 millibars. And if we go ahead and show you the 850 millibar height and winds with this, it kind of verifies this. It peaks around 60, uh, 62 knots or so. So that's a 60 to 65 mile per hour tropical storm that we have going on. At least for now, this tropical wave is expected to move through the Caribbean Sea, according to the European and I have seen some model ensembles of this potentially impacting the Gulf down the road. We're going to have to wait and see what the, uh, what those come up as because we're not 100% sure what's going on. But that's the latest update from the European. We'll show you the Canadian model as well to give you a kind of a cross a resemblance right here. This is that low pressure system that was just tagged right just as we were speaking. Here's the low pressure system that's coming off the coast of Africa as of right now, it is expected to move west-northwest, organize, quickly develop into a pretty strong tropical storm right here, 997 millibars. If we go ahead and show you 850 millibar height and winds, pretty much cross-checks with that strong tropical storm around 65 mi uh, mile per hour tropical storm as we're looking at it because, as you can see, the winds at 5,000 feet peak up around 62 knots. Would you take the standard deduction? That's around, once again, 60 to 65 miles per hour. So that's the situation we have going on in right here. What's really working for and against these things? What's working for it? Easily, the warm water. We are looking at 30 plus degrees Celsius and pretty much in a lot of the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, and parts of the main development region where the European is forecasting this low pressure system, at least the first, this low pressure system, at least the first one rather, this one is expected to move through. So that's definitely something that's working for it. Ocean heat content, absolutely knocking it out of the park right here. 
And as these systems move west, it's going to encounter better and better ocean heat content. And especially that first tropical wave, if it moves south of the, Ant of the Greater Antilles into the Caribbean Sea, it'll be encountering a lot of fuel, especially as it gets to Jamaica, especially as it moves towards Cuba. So that's definitely something to monitor going forward. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear, so show you what that's looking like. Shear across the Atlantic, except for a little bit in the eastern Atlantic, it looks pretty good. There is still some shear in the Caribbean Sea. We'll have to monitor that in the days going forward. However, across the Atlantic Basin, there's not really that much shear to really stop this thing. So where does this leave this? Well, we're going to go ahead and tell you what this is going to leave it as. Here's what we have for the latest for the 12Z of the European. We're going to go ahead and show you the shear and the moisture forecast going forward. The shear forecast is right here. Shear continues to be fluctuate off and on, off and on. By about 60 hours out, we do start to see a s apparent increase of shear. But once again, as we reported last time, some of that's mainly due to inflow, the lack of a trough and a ridge. So that's what's, that's what's kind of suspicious about that. So that's what we have going on. We'll go ahead and cross-check this with the moisture. This gets pretty moist as time continues to go on. And as this tropical system moves through the, uh, through the Caribbean, it is expected to encounter some moderately uh, dry air, but it's not going to be too terrible. It's not going to hinder development that much. And pretty much by the next by next week, we see a pretty big switch going on. We have see the water getting a lot more moist. We see a lot more moisture through the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, which... If that tropical system that just got tagged moved through there, great conditions for development. We're going to have to wait and see what happens, so keep an up I'll keep you updated. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs, and the European ensemble, the 12Z came out, and what I've been seeing is absolutely shocking, so stay tuned for this. We're going to go ahead and sh roll this through. 12Z European, this tropical wave right here, this is the one that we've been kind of t keeping a look at. It has this thing organizing and developing. Now, a lot of these models keep have it either impacting the leeward or windward islands and moving north into the Atlantic Basin right here. However, some more models are showing that this thing is potentially going to enter the Caribbean. But even so, look at how strong these get these ensembles are going. These are easily hurricane strength ensembles right here. You can look at the pressure, the number, the red numbers right there. It's like 6450. That's like 950, 964 millibars. That's easily hurricane strength right there. And the 12Z European is going with this, and some runs have this impacting the United States, one of which, I will say, has this as a 922 millibar hurricane potentially impacting North Carolina. Keep in mind, this is extremely unlikely, and this is just one scenario out of 50, and this is 276 hours out, so it's pretty unlikely at this time that it's going to happen. We're going to go ahead and next show you the GFS ensembles, and they're showing something somewhat different compared to what the European ensembles were showing. They're both showing those waves potentially organizing and developing as we continue to move through the Atlantic over here. However, there is a bit of a difference as the GFS has this thing developing extremely early compared to the European, about five days out. We see, start to see a lot of tropical storm scenarios coming up and potentially some hurricane scenarios. That's pretty unlikely. Don't trust that part of the GFS because they can sometimes be quid, pretty outlandish. However, what I am going to be trusting is basically that this thing's going to develop at a slower pace. And I'm also seeing some increased ensemble runs that, from the GFS of potentially that tropical wave entering the Caribbean Sea and impacting the, uh, some potentially the Gulf of Mexico over here after pretty much organizing and intensifying some in the Caribbean. Several scenarios right here have this getting up to pretty strong hurricane strength over here before entering the Gulf and potentially impacting either Mexico or the western Gulf states of Texas and Louisiana. But keep in mind all these scenarios I just laid out by the GFS, they are roughly 10 to 15 days out. So it's extremely, extremely unpredictable. But we will keep you updated. We wanted to give you this breaking news segment. We're going to continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.